Still not touch <laughs> Call to order the meeting of the Common Council for Tuesday, March 21. Clerk? Yes, thank you, Your Honor. We have um, 12 members present in civic clerk, civic clerk, 11 members present in the chambers, and one member attending by Zoom. Very good. Thanks, Clerk. Now please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for an invocation led by Alder Campbell. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Alder Campbell, just one second. Go ahead. My invoca invocation tonight is about our national anthem. I know everybody has, this is off the script, I know everybody has a prayer or something like that, but I'd like to bring up the little history, Mr. Uh, Stoyer. Well, and uh, and uh, I, I'm, I'm kind of the patriot guy in the group, and, and, and I like it. On September 4th, 1814, Francis Scott Key pens a poem, which is later sent to music and in 1931 becomes America's national anthem, the Star Spangled Banner. The poem originally titled The Defense of Fort McHenry, the stanza recount the Battle of Baltimore, a days long siege between British and American forces during the War of 1812. As like my invocation last June, my hopes and prayers are that everyone think deeply on the words and the meaning and the history and how it respects to our country still today. Think of when we sing the national anthem, pretty much before any kind of sporting event, whether it be football, baseball, hockey, golf, tennis, racing, etc., involving professionals, amateurs, our children as high school athletes, and college at college levels representing their schools, and maybe someday representing an athlete for the USA in the Olympics. So when we sing the Star Spangled Banner at events, I think we all feel a deep feeling of pride that you feel in your heart. I know I do. But at the same time, I think we also may sometimes feel that we live in a very fragile society with the divide between our beliefs, our opinions, and much more troubling our political views. So when we sing the Star Spangled Banner at events, I think did I read that already? Yeah. But I guess it is the price we pay for freedom. So I just want to make sure that everyone here tonight think of what I've said so far and keep an open mind no matter what your thoughts or political views may be on the subject and on the remix of various artists of who they are and what they represent, maybe by their patriotic actions or maybe by their remorse of what they've done but try to imagine what their families have gone through in the past couple of years. So I guess when I say we pay the price for freedom, I think that we all can un try to understand that the choir of patriotic citizens that sings our national anthem every day at the same time together, for whatever reason it may be, know that price, right or wrong. So please bow your head and close your eyes and try to hear their cry for freedom. And hope this works. States of America. And to the Republic for which it stands. One nation. 
nation, under God. Indivisible with liberty and justice for all. to approve the minutes from our last meeting made by Alder Stevens, seconded by Alder Scannell. Any changes there? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The minutes are approved. Approval of the agenda. Approved. I believe Alder Eck has an amendment. Uh, yes, I would like to request to move item U1 and 2 to after J, please. All right. Amendment would move uh, items U1 and 2 to follow J. Second. That was uh, an amendment made by Alder Eck, seconded by Alder Scannell. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. That amendment is adopted. Attorney Bunger. With that move of, of those reading, readings first, um, for first reading and final adoption, um, is there a corresponding item um, from mm -hmm. which those don't, it's just on that? Okay, I, I just wanted to verify. Otherwise, yeah, those so. report items would have to be approved first. I just wanted to okay. double check that that's Yeah, I don't think they're in the plan commission. <laughs> okay, report perfect. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you. Cool. Uh, uh, as amended. I'm sorry. Alder Scannell, did you make a motion to yeah, adopt as amended? Seconded by Alder Weary. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it, and the agenda has been approved as amended. A report by the mayor. Um, just a, a few quick things. Um, we do have a contract on the agenda tonight, uh, an agreement between our police union and our administration, and um, I think it's a good deal for both parties. And just wanted to send my appreciation to both the police union and uh, Chief Davis and she falls for all the work that um, that everyone has done to bring us to this point there's always give and take in this process um, but I think it's a really good agreement as I said for the city and for our officers and uh, I think it um, does credit to the work that that our officers do every single day and so just appreciative for everyone who is involved in that process and bringing us to this point um, also have kind of a fun item on the agenda related to the NFL draft um, so hoping that uh, our council recognizes uh, the importance that this event would have for the community. They, the committee obviously did. Um, so hoping that we'll be able to move forward with that letter of support, recognizing, um, like I said, all the all the great economic impacts of, of having an event like that um, in our community. Also wanted to um, touch on those items that Alder Eck moved forward for us. Uh, as I think all of you understand, um, Producing housing these days is incredibly challenging. And um, I think it's great that we have uh, a business partner in the Martin family as well as a partner in, uh, in Mr. Madcom and, and Gorman uh, coming together to support the, the creation of, of housing in this community and also supporting the local businesses and, and sort of reinventing um, what they're doing with, uh, with their site. So just wanted to extend thanks to, to both parties uh, and ask for council's support for those items moving forward tonight um, last but not least some some bittersweet mostly bitter news um, for our city but um, some sweet news for Pam Manley who as you all know is our assistant uh, finance director and treasurer for the city of Green Bay um, I think we, there's an agenda um, on De Pere's Common Council uh, meeting tonight that, that um, I'm sure is going to fly through with no opposition appointing Pam as, uh, as their new finance director. So wanted to thank Pam for all of her work and, and service to the city of Green Bay. Um, really appreciate it. So 
With that, we'll move along to announcements from our council. Alder Stoyer. Thank you, Your Honor. A couple weeks ago, uh, Espiro suffered some damages. A few weeks ago, losing four buses to a fire. You've seen it on the news. Damages to these four and to a fifth bus have incurred $500,000 in damages. Uh, donations can be sent. Um, I, I should mention that their insurance is only covering about 16% of, of that. So. Donations can be sent to gofund.me.com and you search the word Espiral or you can text the word FIRE, F-I-R-E, to 79489. Any help will be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Alder. Alder Campbell? Yeah, but before my wife was leaving for work this morning, I noticed she had two different socks on and she brought it to my attention that it's a National Down Syndrome Day. Yeah, what you're supposed to do is wear two opposite socks today. So I just want everyone to understand that that's that because it's mm -hmm. celebrated on the 21st. And I said, why is it the 21st? It's because we only have 20 chromosomes and they're given 21. And like, it almost sounds like they're gifted. But at the same time, we know the challenges. So just want everyone to respect that. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Alder. Alder, uh, Alder Grant. I just want to invite residents of the community. Um, the Green Bay Police Department and I are hosting a neighborhood crime prevention meeting on March 30th at Red Smith School in the library. Uh, the start time is six o'clock, and we're just gonna, the police department offered to talk about how to prevent crime within the communities, things that you can take within to kind of help with that. So, thank you. Very good, thanks Alder. Alder Ray. Twenty, um, number sixty-two. <laughs> if you could, if you have that off the top of your head, no. She right. might. She might. She might. All right. Congrats. Thanks, Alder. Uh, Alder Burnett. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mayor. I just want to thank uh, some of our city staff directors: Steck Schulte, Ditchite, Grenier, some city police officers, uh, Chief Knott for assisting in a listening session. Alder Eck. Supervisors Buckley and Vanderlees held at Southwest High School. So also to the dozen or so, maybe there's like 20, 25 uh, city uh, residents that came and attended, asked good questions, but mainly I just want to thank staff for sticking around. It went a few hours and they stuck around even though they didn't get to speak for the first hour and a half or so. So I really appreciate their time and their input and conversations with the residents was very well received. So thank you to them. Thanks, Holder. Any other announcements? Seeing none, we'll move along to appointments. Entertain a motion on new appointments. Motion to approve. Second. Alder Scannell makes a motion to approve the new appointment that was uh, seconded by Alder Johnson. On that, Alder Weary? Thank you. I make a motion to hold until our next announcement Okay. Alder Weary makes a motion to hold uh, the new appointment. Any discussion on that? Seconded by Alder Grant. Discussion? Yeah. Uh, Alder or Scannell? Yeah. Um, got transit coming up tomorrow, and um, we look forward to having a full committee or commission. Uh, why are we holding it? Alder Sure. Um, I think it's appropriate with an election coming up that the next mayor, whoever it would be, have the opportunity to appoint or reappoint uh, these positions. So that's why I'm voting that way. Thanks. Alder Scannell on that? Yeah, uh, I, I think, you know, that's making a whole lot out of these positions. Um, I don't think, I don't think uh, even if the, uh, there's a change in the chair up here, uh, that uh, the new person would have any problem with this appointment. I, 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 these aren't political jobs. It it's seems to be a strange thing to, to tr try and make them so. Uh, it's uh, the Transit Commission. Uh, Mr. Rodriguez is perfectly qualified for this. Uh, 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 Patty did a great job beating the bushes looking for someone and uh, came up with someone. So I, I don't support a hold. Uh, I would like to see this, our, our commission whole. Uh, we've had some holds for a while. Um, and to say, to make it a political football makes zero sense to me. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. <clears throat> Other comments? Alder Campbell? I just question um, 
kind of on the same lines of how how a city position can hold down two positions when repeatedly we've heard how busy Alder when Campbell. it comes to election Alder Campbell we're on the transit commission appointment sorry I thought it was item two we push that it's just the number one appointment okay sorry any other comments on the transit commission appointment Seeing none, there was a motion to hold by Alder Weary and it was seconded by Alder Grant. All in favor will say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Nay. You want a board vote? Board. The no's appear to have it. Okay. We'll move along to reappointments. Do you want the roll call? Well, you didn't hear my aye. Okay. The board vote has been requested. And this is again on the appointment of Mr. Rodriguez to the Transit Commission. Um, but rather, this is a motion to hold. You may vote. Fails seven to five. On to reappointments. Yes, sorry. So there was an underlying motion to approve. Um, so all in favor will say aye. Aye. Opposed aye. nay. The ayes have it. That appointment is made. Reappointments. Motion to approve. Motion to approve made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Stevens. Any discussion on reappointments? Alder Weary. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Mayor, motion to hold till our next council meeting. All right. Motion to hold, made by Alder Weary, seconded by Alder Campbell. Any discussion on that? Hearing none. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. 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 No. The noes appear to have it. Motion to. There was an underlying motion, correct? Yes. All in favor will say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The ayes have it, and those reappointments are made. On to item two, interim treasurer appointment effective April 8, 2023. Motion to approve. Motion to approve, made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Johnson. Discussion on this item? Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it, and that appointment is made. On to ordinance's second reading for adoption. Motion to suspend the rules and take up these items with one roll call vote was made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Stevens. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The rules are suspended. Motion to adopt. Second. Motion to adopt, made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Johnson. Any discussion? We will use the board. You may vote. are approved unanimously. Now we are on to items U1 and U2. Motion to suspend the rules. Motion to suspend the rules and take up these items with one roll call vote. Made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Stoyer. Uh, discussion on that? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. Alder Eck. <laughs> I just want to make sure you saw me. Um, yep. I would like to make a motion to open the floor, please. Very good. Second. Alderic makes a motion to open the floor, seconded by Alder Stoyer. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The floor is open. Um, and just a reminder for our guests, um, just state your name and address, and then we have, okay. yep, approach the podium, and then we, uh, we offer three minutes to our guests for their public comments. Thank you so much. My name is uh, Ted Matcom. I'm the Wisconsin Market President for Gorman and Company. Appreciate the opportunity to talk. Um, last Common Council. Um, oh, Mr. Oh, Matcom, your, your address? 
Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, it's uh, 5375 North Lake Drive in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, last Common Council, uh, Alders graciously, graciously allowed uh, the Martins and me, Gorman, uh, to reach an agreement and hash out all our details about this project, and we have done that today, um, as of today. Uh, it took a while, but we, we, we got it done. Uh, we appreciate the opportunity and direction to get our ducks in a row, and um, I wanted to tell you a little bit about the project that we plan on this site. Uh, to give you a simple answer, um, we had looked at many sites in Green Bay, and this site came up as literally the best scoring site in the WIDA matrix. Um, these tax credits are extremely competitive. It's rare to find a site like this that scores so well, to be honest with you. Uh, the scoring is very site specific, and the biggest difference maker is this site's what's called walkability. Uh, and it's a score. And in other words, there are amenities in proximity that are scored like a grocery store, um, uh, medical, parks, bus stops, and all those go to your walkability score. And this one was off the charts. Um, we at Gorman specialize in creating affordable building communities uh, in these very urban settings. Um, do we have the slides that we had before or no? Uh, I don't know what those. Um, are they in your packet? Okay, so you know you have the rendering of it, and and we've done many of these types of very urban projects. Um, in this site, we initially started. Um, uh, Ed and I talked about having kind of a residential campus on this whole site. Uh, that was about two years ago, um, as the economy kind of lessened, <laughs> got worse, uh, the interest rates rose, inflation rose. Uh, we both looked at each other and like, that's not going to happen. I, I don't have the financial feasibility with interest rates and inflation the way they are to do a residential campus here. And Ed said, I would like to use this building uh, permanently uh, where it is. And we came to an agreement that Ed would give me the soft corner of Leo and military, and uh, he would keep his uh, warehouse there in uh, the Shopco building. Um, and on a permanent basis. Um, there are very few very easy urban sites to redevelop. Um, many people on the plan commission, many people in the alders I talked to, why don't you move this site? You know, just, just down the road, why, why, why don't you find another site? Well, if you would move this site a quarter mile any direction from where we are, wouldn't have got the tax credits. The points wouldn't have been there. So this is it's very uh, important to kind of keep the site where we are. Um, this location uh, is ideal for individuals uh, who do not have a car or are limited in their mobility. And at Gorman, we build buildings to accommodate a specific type of resident profile. Our targeted demographic from the beginning of this development process um, for the site was to appeal to veterans and disabled individuals and their families. Uh, we've been working with a local nonprofit organization, Options for Independent Living, to design and target 27 of our 48 units for disabled and individuals and their families. Uh, Sandy Pop is online here. Sandy, didn't she uh, say something? She is could she... speak next, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, she would speak next? Yep. Okay, got it. And she'll talk to you a little bit about the dire, dire, near, dire need in Green Bay for accessible housing for lower income disabled residents. This housing also represents stability for these types of residents. In exchange for the tax credits from WIDA, I agree to keep this building affordable for 30 years. I manage this property for 30 years. I am a long-term stakeholder with Ed Martin on this property for 30 years. Um, my rents will never be more than 30% of any resident's income. I have a wide range of income in this building, and I'll give you a little snippet of what it is. I've got eight units that'll target 30% of the county median income. That's about $21,000 a year someone will pay um, at a rent of about $450 per month. I have eight units at market rate, so unrestricted income, with rent at about $1,250 per month. I have 16 units at 50% county median income. That's about $32,000 per year paying $800 per month in rent, and 16 units at 60% CMI. And that's $42,000 per year, 
and they pay about $900 a month. Uh, the example of what I give is if you have a, you know, a $10 million project and you have tax credits from WIDA, those tax credits pay about $7 million of your project. I sell them to Associated Bank. They give me the proceeds. I don't put them in my pocket. I subsidize my construction costs. Therefore, I build an amazing quality product, but I have lower debt so I can charge lower rent. And that's different than a market rate product, where if you had a $10 million project, you'd have $7 million in rent, $3 million equity, your rents would have to service all of that. So that's how we get this affordable rent on a very quality project. Um, another individual that we wanted to have you hear was our Lutheran Social Services office, which we will have in this building that will support our lower income residents. They act as a liaison uh, to all of our residents, to all of the Green Bay social services that are around. The bottom line is this is a tight-knit community that gets created, and this building becomes its own community, and neighbors help each other with the daily challenges of life. I have told everyone that I met with, alders, plan, you know, plan commission, citizens, um, about this project, that I, I would sign a personal guarantee that this this development would be a gem in this project. It'll be a value add to the military corridor. It's affordable housing that is quality, stable, and healthy with the supportive services involved. And every study that I've seen on Green Bay housing, the city of Green Bay needs to increase housing options for all residents in the community. In other words, affordable housing is needed extremely badly. This project is about placing affordable housing in an amenity-rich environment with a support network to create a stable and healthy community in the military corridor, which is actually zoned for this type of use in the comprehensive plan. In fact, we just used this site as an ideal urban redevelopment with its staff. So this project is shovel-ready. It is 100% designed. We've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on engineering and architectural, and it's ready to be permanent and go and we hope that you uh, vote for this project tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Matcom. Any questions? Jesse, did you have? Alder Burnett? Yeah, uh, no, no question, uh, oh. Mayor. I just wanted to kind of make the comment. I know he went past three, which I'm fine with, but given the magnitude of the project, I just would uh, recommend we allow the people on this subject to speak longer if they'd like. If I have to make a motion to that effect, I'd be willing to. I apologize for that. No, no don't worry about it. Ms. Alders, any questions for Mr. Matcom? All right. Do we have Sandy Pop yet? Yeah, well, <clears throat> is she on the Zoom? Yes, she's on Okay. Yeah, Ms. Pop, if you can just state your name and address and feel free to begin. Yeah, hi. Thank you for letting us speak tonight um, on this important uh, housing project that we are looking at today. Um, I live at 1195 Liberty Street in Green Bay. I work at Options for Independent Living. Some of you know us. Um, we work with people with disabilities in 17 counties. Our offices are located in Green Bay, um, right attached to the, not attached to the Technical College, but on a piece of land we are leasing from them. So, Ted has just broken the, the, the cap on accessible housing in Green Bay, affordable accessible housing for people with disabilities. We have been lacking this severely for years. Um, our current subsidized housing that we have throughout Green Bay has long waiting lists for people wanting to um, rent there, but the rooms just aren't available. Uh, the accessible rooms aren't available. Once people reside in those accessible housing units, they stay there. Um, for example, I used a scooter for years when I moved to Green Bay. I lived on Western Avenue in a department that didn't have undercut sinks or things like that, but it was level. It was um, level entries, big enough doorways. I could get my scooter around. I lived there 20 years before I bought my home. So people want to have stable housing and they wanna stay where they move into and not have to move because it's not accessible to them. 
I also work with people with disabilities on a regular basis, and we try to um, assist people with moving out of nursing homes and assisted living. One of the biggest barriers in Green Bay for people wanting to move out of those is accessible housing. I worked with an individual three years ago. She has been in her own apartment for one year now. It took her two years to find an accessible apartment in Green Bay. In the meantime, she was living in an assisted living facility and we were paying that through our taxes. So just it is just tremendous what he's trying to do and what the project will end up being for people with disabilities and low income in our area. And I would also support that. I would also ask you to support this project because it's greatly needed. Thank you. Thanks for your testimony, Ms. Pop. Any questions? All right. Thanks so much. Good evening, Dennis Hansen and 6259 County Road JJ in Brilliant. 54110. I represent Lutheran Social Services. I'm a vice president with LSS. I have been there for 30 years. And I've worked extensively with Ted and Gorman and company over the last number of years as a partner on several of their projects. As Ted mentioned, one of our main roles is um, being that linkage to the, the needs of the resident and the services the community can offer. If anyone's ever had the need to find out what your service needs are, I'm sorry, if you, if you had a service need, good luck on tangling that system and we have specialists on our staff who work with the residents to ensure that whatever their needs are are they can find the services that will help support them to remain independent as Ms. pop indicated is so important for these residents so i too um am here to show my appreciation for the project and hope for your support thank you thanks for your testimony any questions for mr hansen thank you sir Uh, Ryan Crumry, 200 uh, South Washington, Green Bay, Wisconsin. Um, we represent Henry Martin Devel Henry uh, Real Estate Development, the applicant here uh, with uh, Gorman and Company. Um, just wanted to create or just uh, provide some clarification on the PUD that was submitted in your packet and the revised PUD that was submitted in connection with uh, this project. There is uh, we submitted. Uh, some revisions to the PUD that was actually included in your packet that you should have re received uh, from the Plan Commission uh, really to um, correct some inconsistencies in the PUD and to clarify some points. Uh, just as some background, um, on February 27th, the Commission approved the PUD which you had in your packet. Um, the Plan Commission, when we had submitted this application for the remainder of the parcel, which doesn't include the, the housing development, um, had kind of split this one parcel up into three different zones, um, one being the kind of existing Shopco building, one being the existing liquor store, and the other being um, some frontage on military. Um, this was d done by the plan commission. There was a lot of back and forth on this. Uh, the plan commission had attempted to put these different zones in, into different use areas with some of them being limited to the industrial warehouse using that use that my, my client was looking for on a permanent basis, which they have temporary use of right now. Um, so, so after some back and forth, um, the, the PUD that's in, that was in your packet, it does include zoning, which would include the uses for all three parcels, which is the entire parcel for warehouse and industrial use. However, they added a caveat in um, one of the sections of the ordinance that wouldn't allow my client to actually build a building for industrial warehouse use in one of the zones. So really it's zoned for industrial warehouse, but you can't use it. So this was an incons inconsistency that we're looking to correct, uh, clarification that the entire parcel, the entire remaining parcel can be used for the industrial and warehouse use it, uses that it's currently used for or use in the future um, on a permanent basis. Um, that those buildings can be, you know, added on to, reconfigured, et cetera, and then that the, the PUD would be effective as of the closing of this transaction. So those are the, um, the revisions that uh, we've requested from uh, the Plan Commission we're requesting be uh, approved tonight. Thank you, Mr. Crumry. Any questions? Uh, Alder Eck, then Alder Johnson. 
Um, so I just want to clarify, um, and, and it was something that Ted said, but based on what you're sharing, so I just want, um, so basically what you're saying is the part, the rest of the property could be a warehouse indefinitely. That, that's correct. That's how it would be zoned, and that's what the use would be permitted, yes. Okay, thank you. All the Jones. Yeah, and maybe uh, just to piggyback on that, um, as a point of clarity, the initial request from your client was to be able to have that in there, and it was not included? The initial PUD application was for the entire parcel to be zoned consistent with the uses for industrial and warehouse uses. The revisions that came back from the, the committee were these, were these zones, and there was a, a number of back and forth, and if you recall, before the last plan commission, um, when the PUD was approved, there, there was some mix-up in the versions of the PUD that we actually got. Um, so we had sent a letter to the, to the um, Common Council stating that we didn't agree with the PUD that was being brought before you. This was then sent back to the committee. There were further discussions. Um, we had sent um, the city, you know, Neil and others, the revisions to the PUD, I believe last Thursday. Um, they, they didn't make it into the packet. So those are the revisions that the applicant is requiring and asking that be approved. Okay, so, so I think we'll talk to staff about that once the floor is closed. But uh, so in the meantime, and I just, again, just so that everyone's clear, right now as it stands, the way that it's in our packet is not satisfactory, but if that change is made, then, then it's good? Correct. Then it would, con it really was, it creates consistency and uniformity. The entire parcel is, is, is zoned as currently pr proposed, and there's no restrictions on building within those zones as long as it conforms to the uses that are, you know, warehouse industrial. Okay. Great. Thank yep. you. Any other questions, Mr. Cromry? All right. Thank you, sir. Motion. <laughs> Hi everybody. <clears throat> uh, my name is Quan Huang, and um, I um, I own a business at um, right next to Sop, the old Sopco building there, 124 South Military, um, the tea house and uh, a spa. Um, and what's I work your, there. What's your address, sir? 124 South Military. Okay. Uh, 54303. So I live right there, um, across the street from Leo. So um, we we remodeled that building five years ago. I w I work nine to seven every day, so about 70 hours a day for five years for the last five years. So probably more realistic than other people from other you know place uh, Milwaukee or some 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 other area, but. Um, I, I did notice that there's a, when we remodeled the building, on the outside of the building, it was really, really bad. A um, lot of um, open alcohol uh, bottles, um, some stuff that are needles, um, used condoms even. Um, so people from the um, Western Avenue, they just walk to the liquor store there, drink and then dump the stuff right by my um, building there. So now it's a lot better because um, we put a lot of you know light and we remodel it. It look really nice. Um, so I just feel like um, you know if we put like affordable um, housing over there that might not fit in that area. Um, me and Terry have about six thousand. We did a car count about six over six, six thousand cars on that me and Terry every day. Uh, it might be too busy street for any kind of. Um, um, housing, you know, I don't think it's a good site for any kind of uh, apartment building over there. Um, also, the parking is a problem too. Um, we don't have enough parking for our building. Um, my customer have to park by um, a Sopco parking lot or McDonald's parking lot um, or other places. So we are hoping to have Leo as a parking lot. You know, we can park on the side street there, but. If it's there, I'm sure I'm going to park there so I can save the spot for my customers to park in our parking lot. Um, so I just feel I just don't feel like it's, it's the right 
you know, right feet for for to have apartment building there. We I see every day Monday morning, Tuesday morning, people to walk from Western there to the um, to the liquor store and buy liquor and drink right there once they get out of the store. And if you drive to Western Avenue there, there there's a bunch of uh, signs for people to you know they have for rent side one bedroom apartment two bedroom apartment pretty much in every apartment over there they have how many I'm not sure how many buildings but the whole street have a bunch of buildings over there that still have you know empty space for other people and I don't know how much is the rent for one of these apartment here but um, there's like 550 to 600 dollars for two bedroom apartment so um, I, I don't know if you have any question but but I'm more realistic. I'm there 70 hours a day, a week. So I'm there, you know, we, we see the street is too busy for any kind, you know, people walking there. I don't think it, it, uh, it's the right fit for that area. It's too busy of the street. Yeah. Thanks for your testimony, sir. Any questions? Alder Campbell? Yes. Thank you for coming. Uh, really appreciate your, your uh, insight on this. Um, you know, and at the same time, I kind of wonder if you have a business, you know, that would kind of bring business there for you. But at the same time, I hear your concern, too, about too busy of a street, you know. Yes, I understand. And yeah. I, I really want to have some, you know, more people coming to Green Bay. I myself, um, for five years ago, I, um, we, I started, I have a vision to build more housing for Green Bay. Five years ago, uh, no, 10 years ago, I first bought my house, the first home, my first rental was right next to the dance studio, um, right. right on uh, Shano Avenue there. I bought the next one three years later, so now I own five houses, four houses right next to each other. Four years ago, I came to, um, I, with my architect, we draw a plan, we came and talked to the zoning administrator, uh, Paul Newmeyer. And um, he shot me down. He said, no, you know, we can't do it. Um, we cannot rezone this area to make, like, um, we, put, we were proposed to put in 20 townhouses. Um, I got approval from the bank, um, a plan from my architect. Uh, we can't do it. Um, they cannot um, merge the lot together to be able to build uh, the townhouses that I wanted to. They said that from, Paul said that from uh, Highway 41, to the west, we can't do anything else other than, you know, we can't rezone anything. So I did have a vision that I want to bring more people or more business to Green Bay. You know, I told him instead of how getting many, how many, how long ago was that? It was, um, it was five years ago. Okay. Uh, right after I'm done with my building on military there, I came to to um, talk to somebody on, I think on the third floor or yeah, third floor with Paul Newmeyer. I'm not sure if you guys know him so the bank approved it was a um, I told him straight I said well the city make only collect only about 1300 a month on each house times four houses that I own about five thousand dollars the plan is 4.5 million dollar plan to so that the city can collect a lot more money and it's a lot nicer I own those houses I had to remodel on those it's so bad. Red problem, the, the wire with the electricity is so old, insulation is so bad, windows are bad, it's, it's not worth remodeling it. So the lot was 400 feet deep, it was perfect. Behind the lot was the park and the school, so it's, it's perfect. Now people have to back out from that highway instead of, you know, my plan was people can turn around and, and head out instead of back out from the street. So just a question, you still own them and they're occupied? They are occupied. And you have good I, tenants. I saw last year the market was so good, so my plan didn't go anywhere. I sold them. Now it's the only individual. I own only two right now. I sold three. I was, uh, I sold three last year, 2022. Good attempt. Well, I I would want to build. You know, I think it's really nice. We can do Airbnb. We can do a bunch of other stuff for that um, townhouses. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Thank you, sir. Understand a motion to close the floor? I got uh, the Zoom if you could. Oh, sure. Yeah, just state your name and address, sir. Uh, Brian Rouse. 
Uh, home, 3750 Glendale Avenue. All right, go ahead. <clears throat> I'm uh, directly across the street from the proposed uh, site. I've been here for 17 years, hoping and praying that the city would notice military as much as they notice other sides of towns and put the money into it. And it's slowly been getting better, depending on where you are. <clears throat> but now we're talking about leaving this Shopko building forever to be light industrial. And I'm not sure if anyone's actually read the the proposed uses here, but this is ludicrous that this could be a contractor yard, a material recovery yard, ground transportation services. So we're going to fill it up with a bunch of buses or work trucks, telecommunication tower. I mean, these are all options on your sheet you have here to leave that building or give the people who own the building the option to leave that. I, I, this is a commercial street with a bunch of great commercial businesses. Again, I've been here for 16 years and I, I love military. I know what Western's all about. I've been here for 16 years. The guy that just spoke that has that beautiful spa, he stuck ridiculous money into a gas station. And to leave that building or to give the option that they can fill it up with a contractor yard or material recovery, it, it, it doesn't fit here. I'm not in support of neither the low income. We have plenty of that around here. And it's great that he gets tax credits for it. But at the cost of what? This doesn't help any of the businesses on this street. I'm sorry. It does not. The kids that have to, you know, walk to the park, they have to go across one of the busiest intersections of Mason. And I see it all the time. I've seen more people get tipped over on the railroad tracks, both kids and elderly, because they don't cross where the crosswalks are. They cross the railroad tracks because that's easier. And now you're going to fill it with low income when kids and there's no park. There's, I mean, there's no green space in this entire property. So everything about this project, which got voted down the first time, I thought, but got reinvented or brought back because people who don't have their money invested on this street think it's a good idea. This is not. You're taking an eight acre parcel that is supposed to be commercial and you're gonna do in industrial and this proposed low income that has very little or none um, retail in it. I mean, I'm not, I'm not against housing. I have plenty of rentals myself, but this is just not the spot for it. If, if, if you don't think that this is gonna come a co at a cost of the businesses that are here, wow. It just it amazes me. It amazes me. You know, uh, Ed Martin is, has been very good to me, but this is just not a, a good plan to let that just be a, a warehouse for the rest of uh, the lives. And if there's any interest in, in growing military with more businesses, then this has got to get shut down because nobody's going to come here and look at that big blue building and go, boy, I want to be next to that. It's just not going to happen. We're going to have more massage parlors and little 300 square foot buildings like we have up and down military and it'll stay the way it is forever. And the businesses that want to expand and want to grow will find a place outside of Military Avenue. So that's all I have to say. All right. Thank you, sir. Any questions? All right. Motion. Motion to close the floor. Oh, go ahead. One more. My name is Ed Martin, and I live at uh, 1316 Fox River Drive, uh, De Pere, Wisconsin. My family has been, has owned Military <laughs> Avenue for, since 1956. I think they owned it before that, but we built the building. My grandfather, built, my father built the building in 56. Um, we owned most of Military Avenue. We spent significant amount of money in West Mason to make it a retail and prosperous area. I don't know if anybody had uh, the chance to get up there and look at Michael's and, and I look at the Arby's, the new Arby's, the, the, the scooters, the Planet Fitness. All those things were empty when, I, when we took it over and put our, we put our money and we are not we are not in the real estate business 
as far as that was not a very successful, you know, I mean, that costs more than we're getting back, but it helps the neighborhood. Now, I just, I live here, okay? I, I'm th th fourth generation. So I'm, I'm, the, I'm the third, but my sons are the fourth. Now, someday I'm not going to be here. I just want to, and I grew up with all of you people here. I grew up in this city. My family's been here for probably longer than a lot of you people here. I just want to make sure, so when I walk down the street, you know what you're voting on. You're changing eight acres into industrial, which means myself or anybody else I sell it to can put whatever warehouse or monstrosity in that area. And if somebody does that, that's for forever. So I just want to let you know, I'm for the project. I'm not against the project because it gives me the right to do basically any industrial thing I want. Now. Would I, would I do something that would de uh, demigrate uh, Military Avenue? No, I live there. But what happens when I'm gone? I'm almost 70 years old. L look at the, you know, somebody else is gonna be standing here. And you're, 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 you're rezoning that to commercial with no, with no uh, restrictions, period. That's what you're buying into. And, and I have to walk down these streets. Tad, I know you don't want me to say this, but I have to walk down these streets and I have to see, you, see everybody here. And I don't want to say, what did you do? You know? So that's what you're voting on. That is what you're voting on. Eight acres of warehouse next to affordable housing. That could happen. So if that's what you want, be careful what you wish for. So <laughs> with that, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll pass. That is quite the testimony. Anybody have any questions for Mr. Martin? Mr. Martin, I do have one. No question? Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you, and you've done wonderful work up and down that road there. And it's, it's greatly appreciated by everyone. Uh, it sounds like you're, you're torn on this. Well, I, yeah, I, I live here. I grew up here. My fourth generation, we spent so much money redeveloping it when nobody wanted to be there. Do you know what it takes to get retailers in those areas? Well, it took 10 years of sitting there until somebody saw, until we took a flyer to, hey, we have to do something to help our business. And I'm torn because to have somebody after me put a mega warehouse next to low income housing, that's what you're allowing. Now, if that's what you want, that's great. That's great for the, for the elder, for the affordable housing. But what happens when I'm gone? Who's gonna be up here to say, we're gonna put eight, eight acres of warehouse there in a commercial area. That's what you're voting on. So I just want you to know when, I, when, when you're voting on this, you're voting on an industrial in a retail area. That's a high price to pay. I hear you loud and clear, thank you. Uh, older story than older scandal. Thank you, Your Honor. Thanks for coming in, Ed. Uh, I've had a chance to meet with you a couple of times. I've also talked to Ted a couple of times. So, um, it's you know, it, it sounded like before the meeting, it sounded like that you two might have come together a little bit on this project, but it doesn't seem like it's totally there. No, we have one original agreement. We, 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 gave the, uh, we, gave, we gave the ability to affordable housing for a complete industrial use of eight acres in, uh, <laughs> on Military Avenue. Have you, you know, I know I've talked to you about repurposing that building for other uses. Um, you might be looking for other developments there in the future. I know you've had other properties where you've had a large 
corporation or somebody come in and take that property do you have do you have a, a vision of what you'd like to see on that piece of property well from a business standpoint there'd be no reason for me to spend a, a significant amount of money uh, uh, on um, on speculation or or development when I got when I got industrial right there I mean why would I do that as a businessman as a human as a Green Bay uh, Green Bay citizen and being in the community for a hundred years I wouldn't do that but why but you're changing the zoning you know? okay. and if I'm not there what's going to happen Mr. Madcom, sorry. Well, excuse me. The residential campus, you'd have to so the the uh, the uh, for the residential campus, the city of Green Bay would have to subsidize me almost four million dollars to put it there. And if you do that, you can have the whole thing. Take it all. But I, I you know, I can't lose money on this. I'm losing money on this. If I, I mean, this is not a good business decision. If I go to all, you can't, Ted can't afford to pay me what I, I have into the project in order to do it, to take it all. He can have it all. You guys can have it all, but somebody's got to pay me. Somebody's got to make it a business decision. You guys are, I mean, I don't know how many people have business experience in this room, but I have a lot. And for and you know I'm gonna I'm, I I have to do what's right for my for my family for that and I have to weigh it with what with, for the, with the community, but I'm worried about the next person down the line, not worried but you're given the accessibility forever, you'll never be able to change it. Do you people understand it? Because when I walk down Republic and I run into Mark or somebody else. And they're going to say, well, I didn't know that. That's what you're doing. I just want to make sure you guys know what you're doing. And it's to my benefit, and, I, and it's to Ted's benefit, and it's probably, you know, but I just don't understand the next person that's going to own that property, what they're going to do. I don't. I have no vision for that. And you have no control, no restrictions, no nothing. Good for now. Thanks. Thanks. Other scale? One question. I am a little confused because I, I thought this was, uh, this zoning was made so that you could keep your warehouse, that that's something you needed for your business, and that was, this was part of the deal to, to make this work for you, but now you don't want the warehouse zoning? The warehouse zoning is, 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 is uh, was a temporary use for, uh, for uh, for the PUD in order for me to come up with a new plan, right? Right. I don't have to come up with a new plan because I got I got industrial. You're giving me industrial. You know, uh, for from uh, from uh, from a uh, uh, community member and a businessman. I. I, I okay. Thanks. All right, Alder Burnett. Uh, thank you for being here, Mr. Martin. If you had your way, what would you want done with that entire area? Have you, have you looked at some of our uh, developments that the Martin family have put together uh, throughout the community? Do you know of any? Oh, yeah. We talk several times. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I have a lot of respect for your family. So. I mean, so if you go to Rasmussen College, that was an old bowling alley. That was a dump. You go to uh, you, you go to Wabi Lane. Uh, I bought that. At, I bought that, and Mike Arbinger came out to me and said, hey, "I have to put some tile in the building. I got a plan. You know, we're going to have a plan for that area. Something fantastic." He said, "How can I help you? Not hurt you?" And I said, "I said I need to store some tile in there for a while until I get a new, a better plan." Well, look what happened. Bell and Hospital. Have you ever seen Wabi Lane? That can go, that could have went into Green Bay. There's another hospital on the board that could have gone into Green Bay, but it is so difficult. I've been here, I don't know how many times. I did not go to one 
at Schwab and I'm meeting. Because they had confidence in the Martin family. And, uh, and I, what I need is time. I need time to develop it, and I need time to do it. But if we segment it, then I'm going, then we already have a deal. It's industrial, and that's what you're voting on. Uh, you're, you're asking for time, but time to attract what exactly? What sort of development would you envision being there if you could control every scenario? Well, we can have retail, we can have restaurants, we can have, uh, we can, we can have uh, medical, we can, I mean, it's on the medical corridor for the, you know, Shano, Shano Avenue. Is, is that a medical corridor? I think so. Uh, I mean, <laughs> there's, if I had the answer, I, I would be, I, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd have much, I, I'm not going to say that, but if I had the answer, I'd be probably a little bit more successful. So you're, you're thinking commercial? I'm thinking to, to complement the area. Any a warehouse does not complement the area. Right. I understand that. But do, do you envision any scenario where residential housing would be placed oh, in that area? Yeah. I, you know, I don't know. Right in, the, in right, right on the curb. You know, I mean, you know, right next to right next to the great uh, 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 spa there that that, that 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 he worked his tail off in. You know, but I just want to, lie, you know, because when I, I have to live here. Ted doesn't live here every day. Gorman doesn't live here every day. And I just want to let you know, I'm not, hey, I'm, I'm happy in hell to have, to have warehouse, to have industrial. If you don't know this, H.J. Martin is one of the largest interior contractor in America. We have over 800 people working just full time. And then when we go out of the area, we have another 800, 1,600 people. Drive by H.J. Martin and see how many vehicles and people are working there. We have over 400 Green Bay residents that, look, that work for H.J. Martin. Uh, so, Mr. Uh, one last question, Mr. Martin. I'm working with a developer looking to develop some housing in my district, which is the far west side or close to my district. And I'm amazed at the number of residential, whether it be single family, multifamily housing that could be placed in what seems to not be a huge parcel of land. So if you could just zero in on this question, if we were to, down the line, if you had your way, could you envision some commercial along military West of military having single or, or multifamily housing behind the commercial development along the street? There are there are there are there are opportunities. It, when you do it, in my experience, and maybe I don't have much, but in my experience, when you drive down, vision vision is everything. Vision is everything. When you drive, when you drive north on Military Avenue and go by the, the salon, you won't see a thing for for two blocks with that with that wall up there. So you're, you're taking the vision away from the from from the use of the business area, right? So now, if you put it in the back, at least at least uh, accessibility, everything is critical in order for success. You're putting. The main thing right on the corner, and Mr. Mayor, you made me do this. You put me in this situation in order, to, in order, in order for us to, to make use and to come up with a better use for that site. And so this is what Mr. the mayor has wanted. This is what you're going to vote on. I've never heard of anybody changing uh, retail to industrial on a, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a retail site. Not that I would do that, but I don't know. You're going to have to look yourselves in the mirror and say, whoa, is that, was that the best decision? I don't know. But I don't want to have anybody come to me and say, hey, what did you do? You screwed up Military Avenue. You ate Ed Martin. You made the wrong decision. I'm telling you here right now, you have to make the decision, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not responsible. Period. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, Alder Weir? 
Mr. Martin, I do have a question. <clears throat> I do have one question. You know, with all, all due respect to, you know, yourself and the developers and planning, Mr. Mayor, whoever was involved with this, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of past tired of the, of the intrigue and the, the reading between the lines. Good grief. This has been a couple months of this behind the scenes shenanigans and hearsay and saying one thing and meaning another. So I, as you have proven, you've done great work elsewhere. You've proven that. You've even given us examples. If we deny this, do you feel there's a higher and better use for that site, better vision that the city could pursue? It's a, it, it's a retail commercial site. We're putting housing on the curb, okay. obviously. All right. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Alder Hutchison? Could I speak? One last. I got a question. Sorry about that. I'm not used to this. I'm uh, not used to this. <laughs> okay, Mr. Uh, Mr. Martin, um, I'm a little bit confused uh, because you own the property, right? Right. Okay, so there was a negotiation done between the city and you and the developer, and it was negotiated to this point, right? That's right. Two, okay, two. so it was a negotiation to this point right at this last minute now no 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 okay i'm from, confused please from day one this was the agreement behind the scenes with uh my attorney can i'm not familiar with the city council how it works but behind the scenes they were, they were putting up different colored maps not including them in the in your in your council meetings changing it doing this doing that putting lot A only. That was never the agreement. It's in writing. Look it up. Right. You decided that I could have all industrial for 48 units. Not 148, but 48. The, the big, the, the big a, a better, a much better uh, 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 solution would be put them in the back and redevelop something else. But right on the front of Military Avenue, for me to have industrial, I could have the whole thing. Yeah, right? Uh, Brian's right. I can have trucks. I can have trusses. I can have whatever you want, whatever I want. That's what you're voting on. Okay, well, thank you. But again, this was negotiated over time. I'm trying to get to the point where how, how it diverged so much right at this point in time. I'm a little bit confused, like, you own it, and you were part of the negotiation, and yet there's a man standing next to you who seems to have the zoning, re you know, he's pushing for the zoning you hate, but he's working for you. I don't understand that. Could you explain that to me? Do you mind if I add a point of clarification here? Sure, go ahead, thank you. Uh, so the negotiated deal between, well, I'll just go back. So there's a development agreement that was put in place with the, with the city that provided for temporary use of the existing Shopco building for warehouse industrial use, okay? Right. The, um, the, the goal of the development agreement was for Mr. Martin and his family to put together a concept plan, something that would screen the existing building and come up with a, a use. Right. So we talked with the city. The city said there's a very large need for low-income housing. So that's where the discussions with, um, and, and Mr. Martin wanted to keep the warehouse permanent if, in fact, he was going to put low-income housing next to it because obviously the use changes, market condition changes, ownership changes. It provides some more flexibility as a business person. So that was the, the agreement that was entered into with Mr. Gorman, um, well, Mr. Mackham for Gorman, um, and that was what was agreed to. Then that was the PUD application that was put in. Now, between then and now, the plan commission has had a variety of different ideas as to how this should all be rearranged. I'm, I'm on the planning commission, so I know exactly what happened. Oh, okay. Okay, so there's been a variety of different ideas, a variety of different... Presented to the planning commission. We didn't come up with them. They were presented to the planning commission. Well, well actually, the staff actually was the one that came up with, okay. the, with, the, with the ideas. So the staff came up with that, and... So there was, you know, they had came up with this idea that they put, put, put these areas into three different zones with the remaining parcel, and they would have different allowed uses and different zoning, um, none of which we 
ever actually agreed to, and which, none of which is which actually in the offer to purchase with Gorman. So, you know, fast forward two to three months, like you say, we're back to where we were, that the parcel is zoned for industrial and warehouse use and, and gets, and, and you can build a building on it for that use. And so, that's what you want. That's, that's what, what you want. That's, that's what, what we agreed that's to. That's what you're voting on. Well, no, I'm asking you, that's what you want, right? Because you right. put if that you language want, in. You, you, that's, I'm, I'm a for, you know, if you want to put the affordable housing there, you give it up to zoning. That's the contract we agreed to. Okay. So I understand all that. What I'm totally confused about is the, it was negotiated and, and the housing's going here and this is a long-term commitment and zoning on the rest of it and now at the now all of a sudden that's a really bad idea but that's what you guys wanted so what why am I confused on this I think I mean I, I think what mr. Martin is saying is is that he just wants to be clear what it is that the PUD says so there's no misconception <laughs> okay. as far as what's going on here as a business person mr. Martin would be happy to have all that property zoned industrial warehouse because it provides him with the most flexibility going forward you know whether that's the best vision for the city that's for you all to decide this is this this contract was entered into with Gorman this concept was coming up was came up with with the low income housing at the direction of the city so that's why we sit here oh so so it's like either we have this housing here with this Zoning that you're not happy with. Well, happy with the zoning. We're happy with the zoning. <coughs> well, you're happy with the zoning if, that's if gonna. Goes. Yeah. Okay, so you're happy with the zoning as proposed in the agreement. Correct. Right. Okay, and we got the development on the corner of the apartments. So, what are we talking about? You're changing eight acres. Commercial of, uh, of retail <coughs> zoning to industrial. Oh, you're happy with the zoning the way it is now? No, the, zon the zoning is temporary, so the zoning would get changed. I, I think the only the, the emphasis that you know Mr. Martin just wants to be clear is that the the zoning change is permanent, and 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 that that's what we're asking for, and that's what you're voting on. I, okay. I, I don't think there's really any. I mean, if there's no misconception. As to what you're voting on. Okay, so the zoning's permanent, but you don't like the zoning. It's bad for Military Avenue. I don't. I mean, I don't know that necessarily. Well, that's what I just heard. It, it's well, I personally don't think uh, uh, warehousing is the is the greatest uh, is, is, is the is a use for Military Avenue, Melinda. <laughs> it's not not your meeting, Mr. Martin. Oh, okay, well, I guess I'm still confused, but I will. Stop the questioning. Okay. Thanks, Alder Hutchison. Alder Eck and then Alder Scannell. Okay, so um, kind of a, I, I guess it would be more of a point of clarification. Um, the terminology that I guess I've come to learn and understand, it was a conditional use permit for three years with the optional of a year and another year, so possibly five years total. And um, you agreed to a rezone and from what the attachments are it's their uh, the city staff is recommending a planned unit development which comes with restrictions so the the wording I'm just wanted to clarify because you know the description of it sure well I mean so this is where we kind of get into the weeds of how this PUD was developed um, the PUD has some restrictions in it um, with regard to various industrial warehouse house uses like um, Mr. Rouse identified on the uh, outside. what you can't, store you can't store stuff outside there's other restrictions within the PUD that so it's not you know entirely um, industrial zoned as it would be traditionally under the city code so you, it's the it's the zoning that's included in the PUD now the the city staff had had uh, proposed putting further restrictions into the PUD that would limit the warehouse industrial use to certain areas of that parcel, which we didn't agree with. And then in the last round, which is the one in your packet, they had another further restriction that while it would be zoned industrial warehouse, you couldn't build 
in one of the zones in industrial warehouse building, which, I mean, I think everyone sitting here doesn't make a lot of sense. So um, that's why we've, had, we've asked for the, for the changes to the PUD, just so that it, it's not conflicting. Alder Scandal. It's not conflicting. <laughs> uh, no, it's uh, not conflicting. Now, I, I just, you negotiated for this industrial zoning, and yet you don't want the industrial zoning. So we should change this, get rid of the industrial, go back to commercial, and the allow for this uh, housing development and commercial, and just get rid of it. Because as far as I was concerned, I thought we were doing this to help out Mr. Martin with his warehousing issues. Warehousing is a big concern. But if he thinks this is a warehousing, the industrial is not what he wants, I, I'm not sure that's what the city wants. I mean, sure, we'll go back to commercial and allow this well, to I, housing I think, development. And you still have both. I think there's a little bit of a, a compromise wherein you get the, you get the oh, low income housing. Okay, and you get the rest we're of making the compromise, and now you're saying that compromise is no good. It I, makes no I, sense. I, I don't, I, well, I, I never said that. <laughs> um, the, 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 my client isn't here advocating against the project. My client is saying this is what you're voting on. We are in favor of the low-income housing with the remaining being warehouse permanent zoning. And we're, he's in favor of that, and he'll say that. Yeah, I'm in, fa I'm in favor of that, but is that the best use for, for green bed? Well, now you're not saying it. <laughs> it sounds like the ultimate sweetheart deal, and he feels guilty about it. i got to be honest. You know, can we change that in the future? That was supposed to be the deal. Where he's yeah. got permanent housing is zoning. There. Okay. But Mr. can we work to create something yeah. better there in the future? I've Mr. got Mackin. first right of option for the whole thing because I'm sitting there for 30 years. Yeah, Mr. Mackham, we, so. we got him. Thank you. Motion to close the floor. Motion to close the floor. Um, I would like to speak yet, if possible. Okay, go ahead, ma'am. Just state your name and address for us. Sure, my name is Jill Rouse. Uh, my address is 2800 Northwood Road. Um, I am here to speak against this housing development, against this PUD, all of this. None of this is good for Military Avenue's businesses. Um, we are renting directly across the street from where this giant apartment building will go up right on the curb. Um, so I guess options for us would be where else can we go that's friendly to retailers? Um, because you're changing this to some area that is going to be industrial and apartments and not just regular apartments, low-income apartments. We already have people playing on the tracks, playing around our vehicles all day. We have people living in the bushes. Um, you know, I don't know how this is going to be good for our area. And I'm wondering how many other people are going to leave the area once their lease is up too. And then what are you going to have left on Military Avenue? I can't see how this is going to help any of us that are there trying to make a living, trying to provide jobs for people, trying to provide things that our community needs um, as far as services and goods. And we are not the only ones that are going to be in this boat if this area turns to industrial and low-income housing. So I agree that there's a better places to put this apartment building than right on the curb on the corner of Military Avenue where there's no green space. So I guess I would be in favor of letting the Martins extend or use up the time that they have to find a suitable commercial retailer for that space um, and put this to bed. It's not good. All right, thank you, ma'am. Any questions? Seeing none. Motion to close the floor made by Alder Scannell. Second. Seconded by Alder Stoyer. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The floor is closed. All right, so we had a motion to suspend the rules and take up these items with one roll call vote. That's where we stand, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, comments on that? Alder Eck? Um, okay, well, I agree. It's confusing. Um, it is my district, and I've had a lot of people come to me, and just today, again, more people. Um, and I, um, Leah, who's the executive director of MAVA, she couldn't make it, but she did tell me that, you know, she could reiterate again that she has in other um, meetings that she was not for the project, so 
I'm, I'm saying that on her behalf. Um, I so far haven't had anybody um, in favor of it. So um, the warehouse piece is a deal breaker for me um, and I think for a lot of people. Um, I wish that something else could be worked out here. Like it just seems like there's so many unanswered questions and loose ends and that's my thought. I can't vote yes on it because it's a com combination deal. Yep. Thanks Alder. Any other thoughts? Alder Shore? Thank you, Your Honor. Um, like I said, I did meet with, uh, with Ted of Gorman, and I also met with Ed Martin a couple of times. I think one of the concerns I had was just talking uh, about this project, and um, it seemed like some time ago that you and Ted got together and drove around the city of Green Bay Mayor just looking for sites, and I think this was a site that was chosen or you know, for, for some of this housing. Um, I talked to Ed Martin, he said he never met with you on, on any of this. So I, I had a hard time understanding why we couldn't, both sides couldn't meet with you or, or talk about this. Uh, like Alder X said, uh, MABA was not notified at all, the businesses at all, they felt like they were left out. And I think they're, they're a very important player in this whole thing. Um, I'm not sure I wanna see warehousing on this either. I think there's a bigger and better use for this project and whatever that means, sending it back or doing whatever, but I, I'm at that point right now. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Alder. And just for background, this council adopted the development agreement, which sort of underpins why we're here. So just so you remember that. Alder Weary? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, is there a motion on the floor right now? I know we took up the item. Uh, okay. Just Well, that one's been approved. Yeah. yeah. No, there is not. And are they together They're right together. now, one and two? Okay. So uh, if we... Would it be more appropriate to deny or to receive and place on file or half of one, six dozen of the other? Either one. Either one's fine? Either one's fine. Receive and place on file allows it to come back, but council would have to vote to put it back on the agenda. Denying just okay. I'll that. make a motion to deny. Okay. And then uh, under that, it, it's been mentioned of you know, the Military Avenue Business District as opposed, obviously they have a different vision we've clearly heard there's different visions even amongst the people looking to do projects on that property. And, and I don't know why we would move forward with the project when they're having difficulties agreeing on it. I, I don't think it's the highest and best use for that site. We've seen great projects by the Martins on other sites who did a much, much grander uh, vision. So let's just deny this and, and they can go back to square one. It's nowhere near moving forward. Thank you. Thanks Alder. Alder Scandal and then Alder Morgan. Couldn't completely disagree more. <laughs> this, we need low income housing in this city. We need housing. How many times have this, we've heard this from how many people, from how many different quarters, again and again. And this type of facility, first of all, I'm a little hesitant to call it low income housing because it's much more than that, it's mixed. It's got market rate, it's, it's got, This is a unit that if you go to other cities, you will find in spots just like this. This is what happens when your city grows and you get to be a big city. This is urban development. This is what a big city does. This is what a growing city does. And we need housing, especially for lower income people. How many housing developments have come forward to us? I remember there was one not long with the, on Broadway that they lost their tax credit and that was a big whoop to do that they're gonna have to go to market rate and everybody was all upset. What about all the people who, who can't afford market rate? Well now we got a unit that people can afford and we're gonna kill it. <laughs> our people, we are, our city needs housing across the board and we have done way too little to help out the lower income when it comes to housing. This is a perfect project for this, in a perfect spot, as you heard, for these tax credits. It scores high. There's a reason for that. This is what big cities do. This is what growing cities do. I want to make Green Bay grow. So I support this project. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder Morgan? 
I agree we definitely need housing and I think there's other options out there that we should be looking for but I commend Mr. Martin for putting out what's right comparing to uh, what the dollar is going to bring to him I think that's a great point and I'm listening to fellow businessmen out here who are talking that they would possibly move We're, are we going to just fill one space and have empty spaces come after so I think I go for the idea of denying it's Elder Alder Burnett and Alder Hutchison yeah uh, thank you mayor I'm mm. You know, I'm conflicted because I agree we do need affordable housing, but the way that this all happened and some of the intrigue that happened behind the scenes that some people are alluding to that I was not aware that was happening, it almost seems like we're trying to wedge in a housing development in a neighborhood in an area that might not be the right, right fit for it, and that could have long-term consequences that we're not fully aware of at this moment. Mr. Martin, you know, he, he, he spoke, obviously, with a lot of passion, and I don't always completely agree with what he was saying, but it, it does kind of make sense it, in what he was saying, that we're putting in a residential apartment buildings there, low income, that I, I, I don't care about that part. I'm actually liking that it's low income or affordable housing so that we can... Uh, find housing for those in our community that need it but if that particular housing development will then stunt the growth of that district that we are trying to develop as a commercial or retail corridor that's concerning as well and we're right by St. Mary's Hospital and Purveya Clinic that could that could be a, um, a medical corridor as well so uh, I'm conflicted I think we need affordable housing but it just seems like we're trying to wedge it into a neighborhood that isn't really wanting to receive it I think there might be a better location that we could try to find thank you and again just to remind folks I don't know what the I don't know what the vote tally was on, on that vote for this development agreement but the council asked for this so well I, we I just, may have asked for it but mr. Martin's raising some concerns that sure. I think a lot of council yeah and I'm, I'm not responding to that I'm just reminding people that there was a vote on that right. uh, Alder Hutchison and then Alder Campbell Thank you. Um, this is an urban development. It's up against a sidewalk. You see this in Madison going down Washington Street. It's a development placed in a city, not a little town. It is providing housing that's desperately needed. We heard testimony today about that. It's desperately needed. This is meeting the requirements that the city asked for. The council asked for this, and it's meeting it. What's utterly confusing to me is the words of the property owner are defeating this. Even though it's in the agreement, what the property owner said is attempting to defeat this. Even though the words say, well, he's supporting this, his words are defeating this, OK? I want that on the record because this makes no sense to me because it's a good development. It's going to provide housing. It, it will work. I think the, the businesses along the district have concerns, but it doesn't mean that it will fail that street. It's just stating concerns. I'm hopeful that it'll, everything would be good if this is approved and developed. It should be approved because it meets the requirements of what we're trying to do with our housing. Thank you. Thanks, Alder. Alder Campbell, then Alder Johnson. Yes. Um, you know, if you look at that whole corridor there, I mean, let's face it, it's a condensed business. It's about as tight as it can get probably in town. And, and yes, this property sits vacant, and it has for years, just like the Sears building did. So, I mean, if we look at what we went along with up there I don't see where this is any different I mean why weren't we talking about putting in low-income housing there uh, I'm confused it's been confusing from the start I think this project was started even before a lot of us were here so it makes it a little bit difficult it seems like we're trying to figure it out yet but at the same time I think that's just a sign of it's not right it's not right I, I mean as much as I know we need housing I think it's just like thrown in there like a dart Mm -hmm. and, and I think there's 
as far as tax base and, and, and creating low income housing, that's great. I, everything about it is great. But think of 10 years or five years or whatever that possibly this jewel of a property could turn into maybe 20 businesses, 10 even. How much, how much business, how much employment, how much tax base can it bring, add, I should say, to Military Avenue? I, I, the low income housing definitely doesn't add it as far as value. And I, and I can understand about all the other people around it as much as, like I said, you have built in customers right there, but at the same time, it doesn't mean they're gonna come there. So I, I think the business part of it is the prosperous. I'd like to be part of a decision that in 10 years I'm going, man, I'm glad we did that because it really turned out well. Thank you. Alder, Alder Johnson. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Senior Director Steck Schulte's not here, so I assume this would go to... He's, uh, he's on the Zoom. Oh, is he on Zoom? Okay. Director Steck Schulte, just, you know, it, I want to make sure that as a council, when we're having this discussion, that we're not conflating these two issues. Because we do have the issue of the development agreement, and, and, and we did approve that, and, and I was supportive of that. But the other issue is the zoning. And, and, and that's, that wasn't before us that I can recall when we proposed or, or, or talked about the development agreement. So Director Sexualty, when we talk about industrial zoning next to a residential development, how often does that occur in the city of Green Bay? Um, without having specific statistics on that, Alder, obviously there are certainly in, um, I think even on the, in the, in the, um, Broadway area, obviously, it's certainly towards the area of Georgia Pacific and so forth. I think it certainly occurs more frequently uh, than probably in other cities that I'm certainly been familiar with and aware of, um, just because of the industrial nature of the city of Green Bay. In a lot of cases, a lot of our larger employers and land uses uh, are have been very industrial, traditional, long-standing companies that have been here for a while, and those employees of those companies uh, have oftentimes lived very in very close proximity to those employers, uh, certainly in terms of our some of our larger uh, our larger uses. So, uh, however, in, in a traditional zoning process, that is, it's not necessarily. Um, I guess you, more Euclidean zoning is not certainly something that is encouraged, but more recently in urban design concepts have been more they, things can be addressed through more through form and through actual um, buffers and protections between uses rather than just prohibiting uses from locating one next to each other um, so I think that's kind of what the thought process was a little with this one certainly why a straight uh, light industrial zoning was not proposed for the site why it's exactly why a planned unit development was uh, certainly being considered here um, you know certainly uh, a lot of the protections I think that staff had looked at throughout this process. This has been approximately a two-year uh, discussion, a little short of that. Um, you know, certainly looking at putting some sort of you know temporary timelines uh, on the on the current temporary PUD was one of the, those protections. Uh, the establishment of the different development areas, uh, including the frontage on Military Avenue, was also a, a key. Uh, kind of protection where we could allow some some additional protections to be used. Uh, the fact that we were reducing and limiting the light industrial uses, so not just a wide open list of light industrial uses, wanted to make sure you know that that was that was clear you know required. And then certainly to look at the requirement of to require a concept plan uh, is kind of to to really anticipate what the, we think the full future redevelopment of the site could be. So those are a little more uh, unusual than just a traditional uh, industrial zoning that would uh, that would be, I guess, in a more standard uh, development proposal. So in the city's comp plan, or maybe even in the Military Avenue Business District plan, I'm sure they've got some type of corridor plan. And anywhere in that plan, does it call for industrial uses? Uh, I don't believe, I certainly, I'll defer to see if, if, if um, I just want to don't have Mr. Buck here. I don't believe industrial uses uh, are on the, the, the long-term plan for those sites. I do not believe. Okay. Um, that's yeah, why, again, not some... that's certainly why we would not be changing the comprehensive plan for those. So to discuss any future rezoning on that would be, again, an additional protection, hopefully against uh, any expansion of industrial uses beyond what we hope is a temporary use on this site. Okay, and I'm getting some uh, head nods from from uh, John Leroy here that that there doesn't there isn't any of those those the, those uses called for I guess in those plans. So so you know, and I think you know when you talk about that Broadway corridor, I mean, what's fundamentally different about that one versus this one? The Broadway corridor evolved that way, 
versus we're imposing it this way. And I think that's where I'm struggling a little bit. So I have actually zero problem about the housing development. I, I think it's a the housing development itself to me is fine. It is urban development. You see this in other cities. You uh, you know when we talk about low income or not, guys, we're, we're, you're, you're you're wading into dangerous territory when you have those kind of conversations. We have a dearth of housing across all levels. We do. We need it, and I think that corridor is just prime for mixed use development, and I think that should occur. However, I go back to the point that I said before, and we're conflating two different issues here. And, and, and when I separate the, the, the housing need with the industrial, the indefinite industrial zoning use of this property, that is what concerns me. And we have to separate those two issues because they're worthy of separation. And I, I get Alder Scandal's point, or, or even Alder Hutchinson's point, where this is what was agreed to. Yeah, and that, that's absolutely what was in the agreement, right? That's but but as a businessman, as Mr. Martin said, why would he why would he negotiate against himself? If he's going to give up that corner, that piece of property, he's going to expect something in return. But that something in return is an indefinite use of that property. And I don't know that I can support that for industrial uses. I would love to find a way to get together. And, and Alder Burnett alluded to this a little bit, and we're not here to play economic development today that that's the role of our staff but i would love to find a way to reimagine that site and get some things on the back end that i think are, are real logical uses i think there are some parcels along that corridor that that are really prime for residential development and this goes back to and i thank the council for this when we did the arpa allocations and you supported that that allocation of funding for land acquisitions this is why i hope we can all see right now what happens when, when we don't have site control, things get a little bit messy and they're a lot harder. And so I hope we can find wise ways to deploy that funding into the future. But um, I think right now I'm just struggling again. It's it's the zoning right now uh, that is keeping me at bay right now. So, there's, so the motion on the floor is to deny uh, both of these items. Alder Scannell, for a second time. Yep, I'd like to uh, address two points raised. One is the intrigue. Uh, that's a lot of baloney. This is how developments are done. It's not done, it's not secret, it's not all kinds of back deals. There's, developments take time to, to happen. And until they get to a certain level of, de of, of being a realistic deal, they're not talked about, they're not brought to council, they're not broadly broadcast around to other people. That's standard procedure for a development. I remember with with the old Walmart on, on Broadway. It was uh, six months that they had approached on Broadway through a broker. They didn't even know who they were talking to. And that was completely, no one knew any about that except for on Broadway and the broker and Walmart. I wasn't there. You weren't there. I know someone who was. And that's just stand, typical standard procedure. And then it took them six months on Broadway knew Walmart said okay we're far enough in this development we can come forward now Walmart stepped up it was still six months before the public or anybody else knew you have to take a development to a certain level before you go public so this intrigue stuff's a lot of baloney uh, the other thing is the zoning I agree sure but <laughs> it's Mr. Martin <laughs> that is insisting on this and it's his property. I, 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 I'm sure staff would have loved to have come up with a different zoning. I, this is what Mr. Martin wants, and I get it. He needs warehousing, I, I, so I appreciate that. And if <laughs> so, uh, I don't know what we can do about the. I mean, that's what the dance has been all around. I think for a long time on this is to get this agreement. Is what kind of zone? What can every party live with? And this is what. Mr. Martin agreed to. This is what he'll live with, apparently. I don't know, sort of, maybe. But for us to say, no, we're not going to do this because of the zoning, I, I don't think we get anywhere else. We're, otherwise, we would have. I don't think staff would like to see this as, as light industrial zoning. It's granting it to help out the business, 
which is a you know an important business, a good business, understand their warehousing needs. So it's helping them. <laughs> but then we're also getting some good housing development that we need. So I, uh, from my standpoint, is this perfect? No. It'd be nice if we didn't have the warehousing, but I understand Mr. Martin's need for it and fighting for it, sort of, kind of, maybe, <laughs> whatever he's doing. Uh, so, uh, and I think there are, there have been things put in the PUD to try to limit what that industrial zoning can do, what it'll be like. I, I, I don't know what else we can do. I, I think to put this off, I don't think we can get the housing without the change in the zoning. That's why they're together. So I, I don't think the housing happens unless we agree to what Mr. Martin negotiated and wanted, and that's light industrial. So staff, I think, did a good job trying to put limits on that to what you know can be done. And uh, I, I, I'm going to support this. I think, I think uh, I appreciate Mr. Martin's need for warehousing. And I think maybe some things can be done around that that are, you know, if it's just warehousing, that's not, that's not too big of an impact in a, uh, uh, in a neighborhood, um, certainly in, a, in a heavily industrialized cities as we are. We're used to accommodating industry. Um, so I, I appreciate the point raised. It'd be nicer if this wasn't going to be zoned industrial, I think. I don't know how we get around getting this housing done, which is what we really need and want and have approved without giving Mr. Martin something he wants, which is the light industrial with the conditions staff was able to put on. So I'm still going to support. Thanks. Okay, thanks, Alder. All right. The motion on the floor is to deny both of these items. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Nay. The ayes appear to have it. We can. Probably. I is deny. that motion succeeds nine to three sorry nine to three on to the report of the no yeah report of the redevelopment authority motion to approve okay. yeah. motion to approve the report of the rda made by alder scannell seconded by alder stevens items here to be handled separately mayor uh Alder Johnson? I don't need to pull it, but I just need the record to reflect an extension on item two as the applicant is a member of my executive committee and oversees my compensation. Okay. Very good. Alder Johnson, that will be noted. Items to be held separately? None. All in favor of the report will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. That report has been approved. INS? Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Maybe Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Weary. Items here? to be handled separately? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. Protection and policy. Motion to approve. Motion to approve made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Stevens. Items here to be handled separately? Aye. Number five. Any others? Hearing none others, all in favor of approving the remainder of the report signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. That report has been approved with the exception of item five. Alder Weir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, actually, on this one, um, by happenstance, I ran into the district attorney at, a, at an event, and we had a nice discussion about this, and I expressed my concerns and what I hoped had would be investigated, and he told me that is exactly what he thought and that's exactly what he asked for. So um, in hearing that directly from him, I'm going to defer to what we're doing here, and we'll see how things pan out. And if we need to do more later, we can. So I'm fine with this. All right. Thanks, Alderwe. Um, so the we need a motion just move to approve. move to approve, which is to refer. Made by Alder Johnson, seconded by Alder Stoyer. 
All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Aye. The ayes have it, and that item is referred. Granting operator, operator licenses. Motion to approve. Motion to approve, made by Alder Scannell. Second. Seconded by Alder Johnson. Any abstentions or names to be held separately? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it. Report of the Plan Commission. Motion to approve. Motion to approve, made by Alder Scannell. Seconded by Alder Weary. Items here to be handled separately? Aye. Item one will be handled separately. All in favor of the remainder of that report, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. The ayes have it. That item was pulled by Alder Campbell. I just have some concern. Um, I guess I gotta bring out. Uh, I couldn't make it to the meeting because I had prior uh, commitment on that mm -hmm. night. And the owner of one of the properties in back of the three parcels, which I drove over and looked at the whole situation. I'm pretty pretty familiar with that area, other than his concerns. And his main concern was, why would I have a couple questions, but why would they want to build housing there? And would it cause problems for him? He rents the property to a landscape guy. Mm -hmm. So one of the properties behind on the three properties, not on the side of the, the old Eagles Club, closest to the uh, Webster. So he's just worried about zoning changes and being forced out of there someday because, I mean, he's not, he's got a good tenant. And he's concerned about that. I mean, he's concerned about the guy next to it, which, yeah, they were changing a tire in the middle of the street the other day. You know, it's not a through street, so yeah, I understand, but I'm kind of like, hey, you know, I can, can help them out. They need to get it in the yard. And it's kind of a kind of a nuisance look to it, and I will admit that. Um, so I'll approach that. And, and probably since they added... Uh, or the improvement of Webster. I mean, it dead ended a lot of those streets, so I'm sure it really killed that property there as far as a business goes, too, because you really got to come all the way from Irwin to get there. Kind of a, hey, I can't wait till my lease is out, I'm out of here, you know, that kind of thing. So I agree with putting some housing in there. So my second question is what kind of housing is on there? Is it going to be the same? I understand uh, the commercial to low medium density. So is commercial apartments and what kind and is low density two family type duplex or say I mean I could see one on one side and one on the other and just kind of wondering myself not not for the concern of the people in back but what, what will create in, in in down the road you know mm -hmm. as far as problems go okay question for know, Ms. Rainier Wig and maybe Mr. Leroy Okay, I can tell you that um, the goal for purchasing those properties there was for housing. Why not build housing there is my first question, because we need it. It could be townhomes, it could be two-story, three-story. There's a lot of options. We plan to do a request for proposals for that site. Yep, there are some salvage and, like, auto repair shops yeah. maybe along there. They need to do a little cleanup, quite honestly, and maybe some fencing. So... I mean, I think we looked at that, but we just know that that's a great site for housing. You can't cut through to Webster. We know that. You have to come in. It's like a, it's a block from the park. There's houses around it. So it seemed like a good site for us for housing. Mm -hmm. um, as far as did, did a question about the zoning. But so, so just to go one step yep. further into that, I, I, what's the difference between the two or does it leave it wide open? And is there a projected plan for it? And the city owns these properties, I would say. Correct. I figured that when I talked yep. to him, I'm like, um. Yep, like the redevelopment the authority owns those three separate parcels, and then the whole, the, the old Zozos, and then the land adjacent to that, so. Yeah, <laughs> Eagles, Eagles yeah. Club, right. Um, yeah, and I really, I think we'd like to get, I mean, that's a site that could support a little bit higher density, so we're not sure if we want to do attached townhomes, or maybe some two stories, or you know, maybe three townhomes across the street. I mean, we're going to look for a re an RFP to get some, some higher density I mean, housing I, there. I agree with that. Um, and then, then maybe the next concern, I just wanted to know what the limitations were and maybe the ideas. And he didn't know and I didn't know. And I don't think he made it to it, so I didn't know. But there is a awkward-shaped property there that 
I'd hate to see the city squish something in on it. You know what I mean? Well, that would be combined. That's the, that's the property that we'd need to declare surplus, right? Mm -hmm. We'd want to combine that whole site. Yeah, we, you know, we're the same way. We don't want to squish things in. We want to have a good design and some green space left there. And it's a triangle. So it's going to be, you know, we're going to have to do some, they're going to place those properly on that site. And do you have, I mean, is it figured out the demolition of the building and what it will cost the city? I think we estimated the demo to be about $65,000. Um, to take that building down. Any other developments that have to happen on that property to make it? Is there, is there lateral stemmed into those open three parcels to the east? I'm not sure. I'm not sure well, at this I'm just point. wondering about it. Um, the roads are the, well, the, all of them need fixed, but you know. <laughs> that's relative that's new though, right? That, that street, I think, was some improvements were done there or no? Mm, I thought it was, but. Not sure. They would have to, I mean, I'm not sure if the water's ready to be stubbed in there, but that would be part of the deal. They'd have to do that, yeah. do that with the development. Well, my main concern here is, I mean, it's a city owned property. I know, I guess, are we gonna do a better job than a private, private developer in there? Um, I would assume this was taken over on the county tax base, probably. No, no, we purchased that property. No, we purchased that property. Um, so, we're, so like we're not going to develop it. We would uh, we'd we'd go request for proposals to find a developer who would work on doing a site design there. Okay, thank you. I just need to be up to speed on the process there. Thanks. All right, thank you, Alder. Um, we have a motion. Motion. Motion to approve made by Alder Scannell. Seconded by Alder Stevens. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Report of the Finance Committee. Motion to approve. Motion to approve made by Alder Scannell. Second. Seconded by Alder Eck. Items here to be handled separately. Mayor, I just I pull uh, item 9 since I see Mr. Popke's here. Do you want to talk, Mayor? Well, then I won't pull it unless someone else wants it. Yeah, I have sure. a question. Okay. 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 All right. All right. All right. I just, one, one sec. One sec. Oh, sorry. And then uh, one and two, I just need to be I just need okay. to be noted as abstaining from one and two. Okay, Alder Brunette notes an abstention on items one and two. Alder Johnson requests item nine to be handled separately. Any others? Hearing none others, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. Uh, motion to approve. Motion to approve. Made by Alder Johnson, seconded by Alder Scannell. Uh, and I think there was an interest in opening the floor. Motion up on the floor made by Alder Eck, seconded by Alder Campbell. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The floor is open. Mr. Popke? That's a whole lot of gibberish. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, uh, I, uh, so we, we'd invite any comments from you, um, but otherwise it sounded like there were a couple questions from, from okay. council. Yeah, I guess I, I would just say I appreciate the opportunity to discuss last week at finance. I know we had some questions and answers and discussion. And um, appreciate uh, the opportunity to ask and answer those. So if there's further questions. Great. And then just quickly, name and address. Sure. Aaron Popke, um, 1015 North Broadway in De Pere. Very good. Alder Burnett. Yeah, uh, Mr. Popke, thank you. I, I support this. I think it's uh, standard practice for a organization like yourself, like yours to get these agreements from municipalities and counties and partners, corporate. So one of the questions that came up after I uh, approved this or voted to approve it at finance was some concern members of the public had who maybe didn't watch the meeting of, oh my gosh, the city of Green Bay is going to have to front several million dollars to support this initiative and the way that I understood the preliminary or the agreement was that we would be providing the city as an entity would be providing public works police fire protection things like that traffic control and that you were going to work with your partners grants you know, tourism grants corporate partners other entities to help fund or offset some of the costs that otherwise would be picked up from the community so can you kind of walk through what you're expecting other than us voting to approve the agreement what sort of financial stake will the city of green bay re be required to provide if the draft were to come to green bay 
And I think we, we talked about that a little bit in finance. You know, right now the, and I defer to the legal team as well in terms of what, what this is, but if we were to be fortunate enough to be selected, then the NFL comes in and makes a determination of the campus and, and we, how things will lay out. At that point, we'll get a further definition and idea of what the cost will be based on the campus and security, public works, all the elements that go into it. So a budget would be set, um, public entities that would be supporting the event, the, the city, the village, the county, and so forth, would uh, make a determination. You know, the ask is to, to have that support in place, and then we uh, do the budgeting, and, and ultimately that's when that part gets decided. Okay. But yes, it's the responsibility of the hosting entity. In, in, the, in our case, it's Packers and uh, Discover Green Bay, and we've got a local organizing committee that'll be organizing that further support to, uh, to raise that money. Okay. All right. Thank you. Sure. I just I wanted that clarification because when the media reported it, those are some of the comments I heard on social media. Was why is the city council agreeing to put the taxpayer on the hook for a draft? You know, sure. And so thank you for understood. answering that. Alderweary. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Papke, for being here. Sure. Um, <clears throat> did the trade get done? Did we get a first round pick? Oh wait, that that's the wrong question. <laughs> I don't suppose you want to answer that one. Two, okay. Two uh, first. Two first. Jotted that down here. Um, uh, understood. All right. Appreciate no comment. All right. I had to try. Um, told my son I'd try. Um, other than the Super Bowl, this is the NFL's I think next big event. I mean, it's huge. I and mean, whatever you see it in any city, and it would be a boon not just for Green Bay but the region. It'd be mm -hmm. amazing. And so I'm all in favor of this. And and just for you know people tuning in at home or will watch this later. Obviously, the Packers want this also. What um, what efforts are the Packers doing to help get this here? Well, we have uh, some are in this room are more familiar than others with the efforts that we've had over the years, uh, beginning with simply expressing an interest in hosting a future draft years ago. Uh, as the NFL has taken this on the road, as you noted, it's become a big time event. Uh, the NFL considers it one of their tentpole events: yeah. Super Bowl, Combine, the draft. Uh, beginning of the season and training camps now is another one uh, to celebrate uh, the game and, and fans uh, being very interested in it. So for us, we Green Bay that is, uh, this would be our opportunity to have one of these uh, types of events. So uh, ourselves the Packers along with Brad Toll and his team at Discover Green Bay have done our due diligence in going to uh, several of these now. The NFL has invited uh, cities and organizing committees who are bidding on this event to attend drafts as they take place. Uh, we've attended numerous drafts, uh, collected our notes, and uh, helped ed inform us as to how to put our bid together. So when the NFL invites you to formally bid, there's a very thorough process, um, multiple pages of details to fill out. You have to submit that to them. And within that, you put together detailed plans as to how you would host, uh, supporters you would bring in, um, details down to uh, hotel rooms, number of rooms, blocking, transportation plan, all those things that go into an event of that scale. So we have led that effort and lobbied the NFL and uh, spoken to them on a number of occasions as to why we think our community is uh, able to host it. And we've pledged uh, to help support it financially uh, with a lead amount of a million dollars. That is above and beyond what uh, we've already put in in terms of resources to, to do the planning. We're also going to do in-kind space at Lambeau Field uh, to lead that as well. And coordinating the effort, as I mentioned, with Discover Green Bay and other supporters uh, that will come on board as this moves along. It's at a, a high level. I we could go into lots of detail. No, I, I appreciate it. You know, I, I think people want to know that you're, you're all in on this, and it sounds like it. There's a lot behind it. And then from what I've you know, read in the minutes and listened, you're really trying to get this. So I wish you luck and hope we yeah, get it. Yeah, think, I think it's, um, you know, for us, as we know, we are an anomaly as far as professional sports goes disproportionately small uh, community. So part of our work with the NFL is convincing them that we are able to, to put this on. I, I think there's a romanticized view of Green Bay, uh, richly deserved in terms of the history and tradition of pro football here. So I think the NFL knows that that would be part of the draft story 
in bringing the draft to a community that has the history. So there's, we've got some unique attributes that I think uh, uh, lend themselves well to the effort, but a lot of it too has been able to convince them that uh, we are in position to do this. Appreciate it. Sure. So Alder Johnson, then Alder Scannell, then Alder Stoyer. Alder Johnson. All right. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mr. Popke, so it, as you can imagine, there, there are individuals out there who uh, are non-believers that this can actually happen. And I know I kind of briefly asked this question of you at Finance Committee, uh, but you had just mentioned uh, that you have to be invited by the NFL uh, to apply. So would it be fair to say that if the NFL is inviting us to apply, that they are seriously interested in having Green Bay host this? That's a very fair statement, yes. Okay. So it's not unthinkable that the draft would be in Green Bay. This is very possible. Very possible. Okay, thank you. Alder Scannell? Uh, I actually have a comment on that question, so I'll save it for later. Okay, Alder Story? Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I was also at Finance, and uh, mm -hmm. thanks mm -hmm. for being there, uh, Mr. Popke. Uh, and I know it was stated, but I just wanted you to restate uh, what what they're thinking about as far as the monies coming into the community as well as numbers of visitors if you could just talk about that briefly P potential sure it uh, when the NFL took this on the road so to speak it, it had two years in Chicago and then has been to other cities Philadelphia Dallas Las Vegas Cleveland uh, it'll be in Kansas City next month uh, we'll have a team going there to, to see it unfold and, and take our notes uh, ranges and visitors to these other communities have uh, uh, been in, at least in the 200,000 plus uh, to more than that. We estimate as far as what, what we think will draw here, knowing what the people that will come and stay in our community and as we know from home games, uh, Packers home games, that, that, that stay expands. Uh, geographically but also we have the advantage of an easy drive from other metropolitan areas that we've seen with games uh, with concerts with uh, soccer match we had last summer in terms of our draw so we are estimating somewhere in the 250,000 range in terms of what we think could attend over the course of the three days uh, direct impact for greater Green Bay uh, still working on some of the numbers but somewhere in the range of 50 million and we know that because of that expands, uh, Eastern Wisconsin could see 90 million. And that's based on uh, calculators that uh, Discover Green Bay uses and past experience with uh, Ryder Cup and other large events in terms of uh, the spend that takes place. Okay, just one other quick question, piggybacking on what uh, Alder Johnson said. How many, how many different uh, communities do you know of that are going for this right now with Green Bay? Well, um, so there's communities that have hosted before that are that are maybe looking to get back in, but we know for for the years we're looking at, uh, Washington is also in. Uh, Detroit was one of those communities, but they're going to host in uh, 24. So uh, we know some of the other communities that are looking to get back in, such as Nashville and and uh, Dallas, Philadelphia, some other cities who continue to express interest. But but formally, it's it's ourselves, it's Washington. Uh, right now for these next ones. Is that for 25 or 26? What, what's the year for yeah. We have uh, expressed an interest in 25 and 27. Okay. Uh, we did not express an interest or, or apply for 26 due to us uh, hosting the uh, Badgers and Notre Dame football game in terms of a large scale event. Okay. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Alder Campbell? <laughs> no. So, I mean, a lot of the questions have been answered here, but I only heard one thing that's being left out, and it, 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 I know it's a touchy subject. You know, I know it's good for the city and it's good for the town, but recent partnerships with the Packers and the, all the private businesses around it that, yes, do definitely benefit from it. But I think, I think there's a feeling that, you know, with the, a lot of the expansion that's been done on the property, kind of stole away from their business. So I really would like to ask you um, if there's any plan of not so much compensation, because I'm sure, I don't even know how much the crowd would cover. I don't even know if it would f fit on the property. So there's going to be overflow. And I just wonder if there's going to be any kind of working with some of the other as far out as you possibly can go to kind of 
maybe maybe mend that that relationship between all the people that everyone thinks they make it, but they do depend on it. And you know, it's just, it just seems like it's kind of a bruised relationship. And I just like to see uh, you and the staff try to figure out. And it's, this is a good one-time chance to maybe work together on it, just like we try to do here. I'm not sure I so, understand the. Is there a question in there? Yeah, well, there was. No, and I'm but, uh, sorry if I didn't follow. Yeah, yeah. So yeah say I was, it again. I guess I, I started to try to detail. It, it, is there any coordination to try to work with all the businesses around there? And with respect to the draft? With the overflow, with the helping, with the parking, with the. Cause you probably don't want to give up parking to people. Well, the, the camp, if you're speaking of the draft, the campus itself will be set. And, and we'd guess anywhere from say uh, Holmgren all the way to Marley and Lombardi. So these are just some loose ideas of where, where that campus may be set. So, so businesses that are either in there or on the periphery uh, will stand a benefit uh, depending on what type of business they are in terms of foot traffic. And you know, a game weekend has been measured at about $15 million impact. And those are a lot of those businesses directly around the stadium. You know, so this is about six times that so over the course of a three or four day weekend, but a, a month long uh, build out in terms of the event uh, structure and those types of things. So I think what we've seen on game weekends and other weekends that, you know, whether it's a soccer match or, or a concert, you know, all the businesses benefit uh, from that in terms of their, their uh, visitors and, and people uh, frequenting their establishments. And so I think the term, you know, rising tides lift all boats often applies to a game weekend. And we envision this being the same way that, that everyone will benefit from it. And if you say there's mending, I guess I'm not sure where, where does the mending, where does that well, take I'm, place? Well, I'm, I'm sure you're aware of some of it. I just don't wanna, you know, I, I know there's concern, uh, you know, and going off of a couple more questions, I just wanna add to, you know, uh, constituent text me, whatever, uh, said, uh, you know, why should the taxpayer have to benefit when all the businesses around it should, should, should bite the bullet on it and pay, pay the, the, the taxes and the money? Well, you've answered all those questions, so, you know. Yeah, so I, I so the, the only money... thing I didn't hear was all the surrounding, and we know how everybody benefits from it, but i just like to see it, you work a little more hand-in-hand hand with, the, with the businesses around it. Just well, I'd, I'd be happy to visit with you offline if you've got <coughs> some more specific examples. I'm still not sure I followed that, but happy to discuss that further. Well, well, I hope I didn't open up too much of a can of worms there, so it's got to happen first. Well, happy to hear from you more. All right, Alder Hutchison. Um, yeah, good luck. Um, I guess you're going to send a contingent of people to look at the draft and see what works, what doesn't. Is there going to be people in that contingent focused on local governments uh, because Green Bay is special in the sense that the local government, the city and the surrounding villages and the county are maybe in a little different position than maybe a bigger city where everything's confined into one space. Is there going to be people who are focused on what that city is doing to through their local governments so, and you bring that back and share with us so we can learn what your people learn absolutely we are a big believer in best practices okay you know whether that is how we operate our football business how we operate our events business i mean we take what is deemed to be top operations and whatever it is and bring that back to Lambeau Field and use that. So part of what these visits are is to see firsthand how the different cities and communities operate their draft. So we, I mean, we saw Las Vegas last year, um, very different type of environment for anyone who's been to Vegas, um, a little different than what we have here. Um, the year before that was Cleveland, uh, and it was right around their stadium. So we saw how that could be built out and the stadiums incorporated into the, the campus, if you will. So, so yes, all of us that are there see those things. 
uh, we see firsthand, we take our notes. Uh, the NFL is very helpful about sharing information. Uh, we speak with our counterparts as to how things work out. Uh, Brad Toll and his team speak with their colleagues at the other um, uh, equivalent organizations who put that on. And I think as, as we get involved in the municipal connections, you know, we would invite uh, our colleagues, uh, whether it be here or with the village or the county, to, to check in with their colleagues and as to how those things work. Okay, great. Definitely. The, the great. best practice aspect is something we take very seriously and, and employ ourselves. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, you bet. I think Alder Hutchison was wondering if he could join the delegation. That's what, <laughs> that's what, that, that's what that question was. Any other questions for Mr. Bobke? No. No? All right. Thanks so much for being here. Yeah, you bet. Appreciate the opportunity. Thank Absolutely. You. Motion to close the floor made by Alder Brunette. Oh, Alder Grant? Mm -hmm. If we aren't accepted, do they tell us why or what we need to do as a city to be able to accommodate that? Yes. Okay. In fact, as we have not been accepted or chosen uh, previously, um, and they talk about some of the reasons, but, but what they do is they help us understand if there's more information we need to provide in this whole bid process. I, I mentioned the information. And it's not unlike, as I've spoken with some people here and, and staff, you know, the city of Green Bay has festivals and they go after certain events. And we've got our beloved events that we have now. This is something just to a much larger scale. So a lot of the same approaches are there. It's just magnified and, and to a greater degree. Uh, Brian and I were maybe joking. It's not unlike the Wednesday night farmers market on Broadway, just a lot bigger. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so so yes, the NFL does um, say if they're looking for a little more information or things of that nature. Absolutely. Cool. All right. Motion to close the floor made by Alder Brunette. Second. Second by Alder Scannell. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed aye. nay. The ayes have it. The floor is closed. Thanks again. Motion. To approve. Motion to approve made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Johnson. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. That motion is approved. Thanks again, Mr. Popke. Very exciting opportunity for the community. On to Park Committee. Motion to approve. Motion to approve made by Alder Stevens, seconded by Alder Scannell. Any items here to be handled separately? That will be noted, Alder Hutchison. Uh, any items to be handled separately? None. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. That report has been approved. Personnel. Motion to approve. Motion to approve, made by Alder Scannell, Second. seconded by Alder Stevens. Uh, any items here to be handled separately? I think we do need to hold or separate. Um, yes, item three. Any others? Hearing none others, all in favor of approving the remainder of that report, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. That report has been approved with the exception of item three. Motion to approve, made by Alder Scannell. Seconded by Alder Stevens. Item was pulled by Alder Hutchison. Um, I think we need to amend this from consideration with possible action to consider approval. Is that correct? We, will, we are voting to approve this agreement. Okay, so Alder Hutchison makes a motion to approve this item. Second. Seconded by Alder Scannell. Any comments on that, Alder Hutchison? Uh, no, uh, other than uh, in the committee, uh, I think negotiations look good from both uh, sides, as you mentioned, and I think uh, it's a worthy uh, vote for an aye. Very good. Thanks, Alder. Uh, any others? Any other comments? Seeing none, all in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. The ayes have it, and that item has been approved. Thanks again to Chief Davis, Chief Falds, and uh, Mr. Biller and the rest of the negotiating team. Really appreciate all the work that went into it. Um, now we're on to an informational item. So this is just the municipal court report from February 2023. That is in your packet. And then uh, resolutions. Motion to suspend the rules. Alder Scannell makes a motion to suspend the rules and take up all the resolutions with one roll call vote, seconded by Alder Stevens. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The rules are suspended. 
Motion to approve, made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Eck. Alder Burnett? I'd just like to abstain from uh, Oops, sorry. resolution just number three, please. Alder Burnett abstains from resolution three. Any, <clears throat> any other comments? Seeing none, we will use the board. Resolutions are approved unanimously. On to ordinances first reading. Motion to suspend the rules. Second. Alder Scannell makes a motion to suspend the rules and take up these items with one roll call vote. Seconded by Alder Johnson. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. The rules are suspended. Motion to advance. Second. Motion to advance made by Alder Scannell. Seconded by Alder Johnson. Any comments? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. Those ordinances are advanced to a second and final reading. Petitions and communications. <laughs> adjournment. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn made by Alder Scannell, seconded by Alder Eck. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. The ayes have it. We're adjourned. Thanks, everyone.